Morning guys, Mark Farashi, ProTech Dog Training. A little bit of special effects going on here as we drive into LAX at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> Getting uh, Diana on the plane to go back to New York. So, uh, about a two hour drive for me to get to the airport. So we're driving in now. I wanted to kind of go over and do a little yak session I'm on the road as usual. I'm sitting here driving. Um, in regards to some of the comments from my last video for Diana and doing the agility, uh, by no means because I mentioned that the imprinting was done, is it done, okay? She's still a very young dog. So you're, you're looking at these critical development periods being now until 16 weeks, but then there's even more to come all the way up to six months of age until the dog gets to that next uh, major maturity stage, right? So by no means is the dog done imprinting and learning things and being in that uh, learning stage of life, right? Everything the owner does with this dog is going to be critical of that dog uh, as he goes along. So his, the main things that I've emphasized so far is the baseboard that we've given him. All our marker words, no good, yes. Getting her out in public, people, places, things. A lot of imprint in that. A lot of confidence building with jumping her up on rumble piles and going to Home Depot and then starting my agility. So I mean, I just kind of switched tracks and started emphasizing the agility aspects of things. That's all confidence building. But she's still a young, uh, young dog. So there's still all this development that still needs to be done. So um, the other one that you should be aware of and be conscientious of as you've been watching my videos, how much work I put into vocabulary. You want to eat, you want to go bye-bye. Um, the word no, so you've got a negative marker. I even use that little that you see Caesar using all the time. Just what one of the things that I used to do all the time, way before I ever met him, uh, and it was something that I kind of feel that I gave him. He, he claims that it was his mom or somebody else that gave it to him, but it, it is what it is. It doesn't really matter. Bottom line, I use it real heavy. It's your negative marker in trying to get the dog to break what they're doing so they're going after something they shouldn't be and you, okay, you kind of make it a corrective there's a bunch of little noises we use in that uh, negative realm the ah you know the, that's a negative marker the word no is a, is a semi-negative marker because i like to teach my customers to use the no marker in, in their training in regards to just being matter of fact no you need to do it over again so it's just nope right but these dogs at this age young animals pick up on all the sounds and everything because it's all new to them, right? So they register that dogs don't speak language, right? They're very in tune with body language and voice tone, right? And sounds, right? So these are sounds that the dog's getting, getting into. So the same thing, that's what voice tone is. It's a sound, right? And it's a sound that denotes your uh, positive or negative uh, inflection on the dog, right? So you need to, to understand that there's some negative markers and there's also positive markers. When you hear my voice telling them, yay, good girl, she, she gets used to all that, right? And so you do a lot of this development and it's a communication base for it, it really is. So that's why I tell my customers, if you have a dog trained by me, in the beginning, you want to be a parrot. You want to kind of try to mimic the same sounds that I'm making and do the same triggers and things that I've already set up as much as possible. You're not going to be exactly the same. You don't, you're going to, at first, it's struggle because you're going to have to think about it. And you, you're not going to do that. You're going to be who you are. So, But as awareness of these little sounds and trigger words and how I go into things is important. That's why I covered that in the agility yesterday because we were trying to, to cover that aspect of things in regards to building confidence and, and going through agility with the animal. Right? So, but it's, there's a lot more to it. So the main thing is that if you have a dog trained by me and I, and by any trainer for that matter, you need to figure out how he conditioned the animal or she, how they can condition the animal and then what some of those triggers are so you can flow with the dog so the dog has familiarity that they can draw confidence in as they get to know you if they're a young puppy like this, brand new owner, right? They're going to their new owner. She's going to be a little bit off, you know? She's going to be insecure, going, where the hell am I at? Who am I with? And it's going to take her three or four days till she builds that bond and she feels trust. So having these noises in your roller decks and having these little triggers and seeing how I work the dog with all my videos is going to be a big help to this new owner, right? And if it puts his head in the right place, he'll be using some of those sounds, and then he'll fall into being who he is, and it is what it is at that point, right? 
So hopefully he's learned something, and hopefully he's uh, been watching enough that he's picked up on how I've conditioned the animal in such a way that he's going to benefit from everything I've done with him. Right. So. We'll find out how it goes as he reports in and lets me know how she's doing. I usually always keep track of my, my people with their puppies um, and try to stay in touch with them as much as I can within reason, you know. Uh, Tina, the ex-girlfriend, she always she has a, a thing with her a breeder. She calls her people every year on their birthday and checks in with them and wishes the dog a happy birthday and, and says hi to the customer. She's got customers. She's been doing this for as long as the dog's alive until they pass. And she writes records on all this. If the dog gets an ailment, uh, has a problem, she keeps records with all that. I don't get into it that heavy. I'm not a professional breeder. That's not my uh, trade in life. It's something that's, uh, uh, call me a heavy hobbyist in what I produce. Yes, I've got some dang good bloodlines and I've got some good stock and, and I'm quasi professional in that respect but I don't reach that so down deep that I call myself a breeder and really get to that point. Will I? Yeah maybe. You never know. But I do try to be conscientious and aware of making sure that I I want to keep an eye on my dogs. I want to see dogs like Diana that are going to work with law enforcement and I want to see them succeed and I want to know that they're succeeding and be able to get, you know, Reports now and then. If she, you know, if she's a drug dogger. If a dog's a drug dogger, or somebody on the police force, I'd like to know if she made a big fine to be able to brag about it a little bit. You know, it's it's all credit to my bloodlines and what I got going on out there. So, all right. So I'm going to be driving into the freeway here, and traffic's going to start packing up. So I need to start concentrating on my driving. I thank you very much. You guys have a good day. Mark Farash and Protect Dog Training with a little the act session before I head to the airport for real here. Talk to you guys later.